You're on the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the next to last Sunday in August of 2020. I'm going to talk to you about the Great Escape. Apparently hundreds of thousands of people are leaving our major cities on both coasts. And each of them are seeking a better life. Homelessness, crime, and drug use were already on the rise in many large cities prior to 2020. Now many big city residents willing to put up with a certain amount of chaos in order to maintain their lifestyles are having second thoughts. The COVID-19 pandemic, along with months of civil unrest, have finally pushed a lot of people over the edge. Moving companies on both coasts are doing a booming business as wealthy and middle-class families flee at a blistering pace, and most of those families don't ever plan to return. Los Angeles is a perfect example. Once upon a time, it attracted wealthy and famous people from all over the globe. Hollywood is there. But in 2020, it's now classified as a city on the brink. For sale signs are dotting the landscape in every suburban street as middle classes, particularly those with families, flee for safer suburbs, with many choosing to leave L.A. Leave LA altogether. Almost half of the entire homeless population of the entire country now lives in the state of California, and a large proportion of them are addicted to drugs. Would you need more re reason than that? Many areas of L.A., if not California, are considered nightmarish. Junkies and the homeless, many of whom are clearly mentally ill, walk the palm-lined streets like zombies, all just three blocks from multi-million dollar homes overlooking the Pacific. Stolen bicycles are piled high on pavements littered with broken syringes. Now, as economic conditions become worse, so do the conditions. Crime is skyrocketing in L.A. TV bulletins are filled with horror stories from across the city. A woman being attacked during their mar morning jog or residents returning home to find strangers defecating in their front gardens. According to online real estate company Zillow, there's a mass exodus of people looking to get out of San Francisco real estate. As the housing market is on fire in the Bay Area suburbs, all the way to Lake Tahoe. According to the company's 2020 suburban, urban suburban market report, home prices in the city have fallen 4.9% year over year. While inventory has jumped 96% during the same period. A flood of new listings on the market over the last few years. The losses are considered worth it simply to get out of California. So how does the state legislator, legislature respond to all of this? Well, they apparently decided that the mass exodus is not happening fast enough because a bill is being introduced that would impose a new wealth tax on the very wealthy. The San Francisco Chronicle is reporting that a group of California state lawmakers last Thursday proposed a first-in-the-nation state wealth tax that would hit about 30,400 California residents and raise an estimated $7.5 billion for the general fund. Billion with a B. The proposed tax on net worth, excluding directly held real estate, that exceeds $30 million for single and joint filers and $15 million for married filing separately. Now, in the old days, a lot of Californians would just head north of Portland or Seattle, but civil unrest in Seattle never seems to end. An acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf recently said that there had been 12 official riots in the first 10 days after federal law enforcement officials left Portland. The East Coast isn't all that different. There's a dramatic exodus from New York City. The New York Times has reported that 420,000 New Yorkers have moved out of the city since March 1st. 
That's just between March 1st and May 1st. According to the local Fox affiliate, United Van Lines is reporting that between May and July, there was a 95% year-over-year increase in interest in moving out of Manhattan. That compares with a 19% increase in moving interest in the U.S. overall. So where are these people going? Well, the top destinations for people who moved out of New York City between March and August was Florida and California. Together, they comprise 28% of all relocations. Texas and North Carolina made up 16%. And it isn't just residents that are leaving. Business after business is shutting down, including some of the most iconic retailers in the city. J.C. Penney, Neiman Marcus, the anchor tenants at two of the largest malls in Manhattan, recently filed for bankruptcy and announced they would shutter those locations. The Subway restaurant chain has already closed dozens of locations in New York City just in the last few months. At one time, Fifth Avenue was a playground for the elite of the world, but now it essentially looks like a demilitarized zone. In about six months, most of the progress that New York City has made since the dark days of the 1970s and 80s has completely disappeared. Homelessness and poverty are both exploding, and crime rates are shooting into the stratosphere. And they want to fire a significant number of policemen. The number of shootings in July was 177% higher than it was for the same month last year. It should be clear to anybody paying attention the things aren't going to turn around anytime soon. And many people are convinced that things are just going to continue to get even worse. In life, the decisions we make always have consequences, and the consequences for those decisions as a nation are yet yet to be realized. But you know when the time comes, it won't be good.